I was telling you about that math tutoring website, Jay. I'm not good at math. I don't know if you are or not. No, and I'm not sure if this would help either one of us. Well, it, it may. It may at least pique your interest in contacting this website if you have math problems. Check out the ad online here. www.solvex4u.com The old mathematician dream line. Math. If you are over 18 or... You are under 18. You can share in the excitement by visiting www.solvex4u.com. Visit now. Uh, There you go. So this is a real math tutoring site. I get it. And they're... You know, they're obviously putting on a little act here to draw some interest to their website. This is the the governor rolled out the new Common Core Task Force, <laughs> and this is a way to get kids involved. It, there it is right uh, there. It has yes. nothing to do with math. They're making math sexy, Jay. Oh, yeah. They're bringing the sexy back <laughs> into mathematics. Oh, you make math sexy. <laughs> hey, Rick Lee is here from the uh, folks at Centro. He's the deputy executive director. Uh, Rick, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Are How you are you ma- with math? Ma- math guy or not? I'm, not? I'm not really a math guy. I'm a so- social science guy. There yeah. you go. Well, that could make you a math guy, I think think maybe although i don't think they need to do something for the females who need math help so this is going to draw guys of interest you know that are interested to that website i don't know about the girls the only math you're going to do there is how many how many minutes have i spent online and how much is it costing me to call this i think sure that's about it uh the transportation bill that uh, went through um rick i don't know if you had any general feelings about that i know we discussed it the last couple of days on our show yeah this uh this uh amendment that was actually attached to the House bill is mm-hmm. really devastating or potentially devastating to us. This is something that uh, Congressman Hanna is working very hard on our behalf, mm-hmm. and on behalf of all our constitu- his constituents and our riders, mm-hmm. to have removed. Uh, this is something where Centro and our four-county system could lose $2 million of uh, federal funds, and that would really be a problem for us. In Utica, it's the amount's $452,000. Now, we have go, gone through a number of different uh, stages and problems with our financing. Uh, we rely on government for a substantial portion of our operating budget and our capital budget. Uh, and this would just be devastating if this amendment is not removed from the House bill. And speaking out, outside uh, off the air, uh, we were talking that this is really planned. You guys plan on having this $2 million. Oh, budget, absolutely. So you would have to make some adjustments. Absolutely. This is money that, you know, we count on every year. And if it's not, uh, if the amendment isn't removed from the House bill, then we would have to make uh, assessments as to how we would handle a reduction of our federal aid by $2 million. And it seems surprising to you and I guess, uh, you know, maybe surprising to some of the Congress uh, folks in in the House that that voted on this. And I know that Richard has put out something through his uh, spokesperson, you know, saying that he's disappointed the amendment was done in the middle of the night and no one objected to it, and uh, you know, speaking more uh, with you off the air, that he has put together a team, and it looks like uh, 60 members of the Congress are going back to ask the uh, House Senate Committee to restore this public transit. That's right. Congressman Hanna spearheaded an effort to have a letter signed to the conference committee, which is the committee comprised of members of the Senate and members of the House. They get together to reconcile the differences in the bill. Congressman Hanna spearheaded an effort get the New York delegation to sign a letter uh, emphasizing to the conference committee how important this money is to New York State and all of the seven states excuse me, that was affected by this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this amendment took place uh, sort of in the late hours of the day, so to speak, and uh, we had Anthony Brindisi on. The assemblyman joined us yesterday to talk about this issue, and you might have some interest in listening to this clip as well. It stinks of politics, and it's overnight. Harsh. Overnight, mm. you know, it's, uh, that's that's not the way to handle things. I mean, you got to try and do things open, open and transparent. And, and when the members that are actually representing those states are there to try and debate or block it, or I don't know, you know, what the process is in the House, but do something. You think that was sneaky politics by having the highway bill passed and then yeah, throwing that amendment in absolutely. there? Absolutely. You know, this is I don't know if this is something that was discussed earlier, but obviously you, this is something that affects uh, 50% of all public transportation in the in the country is mm-hmm. in those eight states. It's Assemblyman uh, Anthony Brindisi on our show yesterday, and Rick Lee is here, the Deputy Executive Director of Centro today. Uh, your reaction to that, too? Well, Assemblyman Brindisi is right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. The, the whole process by which this was done is you know, it's kind of questionable with mm-hmm. respect to how Congress conducts business. I know that Congressman Hanna has very forcefully spoken out about how this was all handled, mm-hmm. and it's handled through the leadership of the House. Right. 
you know, looking back on how the, the, the process works and, and all of that really at this juncture is, in my view, a waste of time. What we're facing now is an effort to get the money restored. Um, Senator Schumer, Congressman Hanna, Congressman Katko are really pushing very hard to do this. Mm-hmm. And the community here and all over our four-county region really need to understand that, you know, these individuals are looking to put service back, put money back, so that we can provide the service we provide. And it is an important service. You look at things, you know, infrastructure, housing, transportation. Those are the things that we really need and we build our communities on. So I think it is important. And and going back to, uh, you know, the idea of restoring this funds, how long would this help you guys out? This is a five- or a six-year bill? This is a six-year bill. Uh, The the two versions of the bill um, are slightly different. The Senate bill is a six-year bill and funded. The House bill is a six-year bill. It's only funded for three years. Then they have to figure out after three years how to fund it. But it's a six-year bill. So for us, it's Centro. It's really twelve million dollars over the six years, and that's just—it's it, not something that we can tolerate. Sure, central bus travel crucial to our economy and our business here in the Mohawk Valley and Utica, especially with Nano coming in and more influx of folks coming into the area here. We really need these services. Obviously, I lived in Syracuse for years as well and knew how crucial Centro was there. Are you based? Where are you based, Rick? You're, Syracuse. I work in the Syracuse office, mm-hmm. but I'm here um, in Utica quite often. Ron mm-hmm. Buchero, our general manager in Utica, is a lifelong Utican. And he and I were just talking before I came on about the Nano Center, and they're looking for construction to begin sometime perhaps next year or the year after. But you're talking about the potential for 1,500 or up to 3,000 jobs. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are going to be asked to provide service. We want to provide service. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. So this is critical to us as we look to expand our service to help economic development in this community and all, in all the four counties. For sure. With, with that, some demographics, are you seeing some demographic changes as far as riders on the bus? No, our ridership continues to steadily increase, mm-hmm. and that's something that, you know, we work hard to um, to foster. Mm-hmm. We're, we'll be going through some processes next year with respect to marketing, and, you know, we're always trying to tweak the system to increase ridership. Younger riders, though? I think what Jay was yeah. getting at, perhaps a younger population? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. We're, we're always looking to do that as well, to, mm-hmm. to target those groups. Now, in, in our communities, it's a little different than in larger cities because of, you know, the, the nature of how people move. Mm-hmm. But, yes, absolutely, that's something that we're always looking to. But I think that might be important and instrumental to the point that you made as far as nano goes because, uh, you know, we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're, I think we're seeing a, a, a change, in, you know, with the development and housing and, and apartments that we're seeing downtown, something that we haven't really had in our community in, in a while, um, you know, those, those apartments, the things that are pe- people are looking for. And I think uh, maybe uh, my age group, is starting to get away from the, 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 the hour travel time, and they like the walkability and the reason that their neighborhoods are right there. So they might be more likely to hop on the bus and go maybe a few blocks rather than purchasing a vehicle and driving around. That's absolutely the case. And we're, you know, In Syracuse, we've gone through the same thing. Downtown has been rejuvenated. It continues to be a lot of people living downtown. We're, we're seeing take advantage of our service sure. because they work outside of the downtown. And I think the other point that uh, we have to talk about is the time frame. How long do you think this will take uh, for, uh, you know, the, the congressman to maybe champion some kind of uh, results? We're looking to have this resolved from what we hear before Thanksgiving. But the surface transportation extender that's in place now expires on November 20th. So in all likelihood, we'll know something by the 20th. Great. Right. Rick, thanks for coming in. Best of luck moving forward. Keep us uh, abreast of uh, what's going on. Please. Thank you very much. Thanks for happy to come anytime.